Welcome to Wisconsin on November 1st. I am beyond excited. Last year, I was here four days later, maybe on the fifth we got here, and a whole week straight we had highs in like the 70s, nearing 80, limited deer movement. This week, highs are in the 40s, lows are in the teens and lower 20s. So great for deer movement. It's gonna be bad for my toes, but I'll figure out a way to do it. Got plenty of bucks on trail cameras. Uh, my, my dad's already been here hunting the last three days. He's seen a couple of bucks chasing does, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I grew up hunting this property with my dad and his friends. Since those early days of my hunting career, I've gone on to guide and hunt all over the country, spending most of that time chasing big game out west. But the opportunity to hunt Wisconsin whitetails and share camp with my dad and brother is a trip that I really look forward to. While I've hunted here sporadically the past few decades, it wasn't until last year that I got serious about hunting these bucks during the rut. Honestly, I can't get enough of it. I think I just misplayed my setup. I could have gotten shots at two bucks if I was set up 60 yards that way. That buck caught my scent and uh, it took him about two or three seconds to figure it out and then he got out of dodge. After seven days of hunting last year, both my dad and I came up empty-handed. Perhaps it was the hot, dry weather limiting movement or bad tree stand placement on my part. Either way, the opportunity didn't present itself. All right, it's just after five. In the morning, it's gonna be light about seven. I got a decent walk in. It's probably right around freezing this morning. I think it's probably gonna drop into the 20s before it gets warmer, but um, yeah, pretty excited. Last year, we had a camera crew with us, but I'm self filming this year because archery hunting whitetails is really a solo experience. Sure, I could sit in a double stand with my dad, chit-chatting about life, but that isn't conducive to killing a buck. I'm starting my hunt right back at the good old Oak Flat, but I'm set up 60 yards to the east of where I had my close encounter last fall. I've got recent pictures of shooter bucks here, and if the deer take the same path as they did last year, I should get an opportunity. Oh, it's finally light enough to film. I just have like the longest, uh, most active, busiest 90 minutes I've ever had in a tree stand. I gotta give props to all the people that self film. I had no idea what it was gonna take. I also underestimated my walk in here. I thought it was gonna be half an hour. It took me close to an hour. Um, I blew one deer down in the valley that I came up. What are you gonna do? And just by the time I was, well, I was probably 75% finished. I had a fork and a horn. Uh, come out of this clear cut and onto the oak flat. Anyways, I'm looking for a mature buck. So I've got about 11 hours, maybe 11 and a half hours. Right here. <laughs> Unless, of course, something interesting happens between now and then. 
In my younger days, it was hard for me to sit four hours, let alone all day. Now, at 43, I look forward to an 11-hour sit. I relish it. When else does a person get that much time alone with their thoughts? If I didn't have a bow hanging on the tree next to me, you could say I was meditating. cool. <clears throat> My second orchid horn of the day. And what was really cool about this second one is that it's given me a lot of confidence in this stand. Because where he came, he came out of this clear cut. It's an old clear cut. Well, oh, it's probably five or six years old. It's still pretty thick. But he came right along the ridge in the clear cut and then pretty much came the same path as that other one. But like I said, the other one kind of heard something, so he didn't do his natural thing. But this guy had no idea. And then the path that he took, took him probably within seven yards of the base of this tree that I'm in. And then he went right over to that scrape. And he worked that scrape over and worked that lick and branch over, which was great to see. Um, but why it gives me confidence is that it was perfect. Like I had multiple shot opportunities. He was close. The wind was blowing from him to me. Um, and, and I think the way they're coming in here, it's uh, that scrape is attracting to them, right? So as soon as they get onto this oak flat, they want to go to this scrape. And so that's where their focus is and hopefully not on uh, looking around in trees for dudes. There is something about this Wisconsin forest in the fall that I can't get enough of. The fall colors, the smell of the decomposing leaves, the low angle of the sun, it all adds up to a warm, fuzzy feeling. When I take hunting clothes out of their storage bin, it doesn't matter where they were last. That musty smell takes me straight to the Wisconsin deer woods. Everything is setting up just right. The rut and cool temperatures combined with a steady breeze and a good acorn crop on the oak flat have created the perfect conditions to kill a buck. Thank you. 
just happened so fast I didn't even have a chance to get excited oh, but I'm excited now oh my oh, I, I was reviewing the footage because I was worried that the autofocus wasn't getting deer in focus so I was trying to find a clip of a deer and all of a sudden I can hear ch -ch -ch -ch. and uh, I'm thinking man I, so I started shutting down the camera and I started looking around and I hit pause on the clip I was playing because I'm like I did I thought I was maybe hearing the clip and sure enough I look over nice buck just coming like already within range 25 30 yards and just right down the same trail almost as those two forkies and i mean just right underneath me point blank range and uh i mean the shot was top pin that is awesome that is awesome oh yes I'm gonna celebrate by having an apple. I think that's called a sweet tango. If you haven't bought a bag of sweet tangos yet, do yourself a favor. Delicious. This is a good reminder to stay focused all the time. I was distracted by my camera and I let my guard down. That buck spent more than two minutes at a scrape that was 25 yards from me, and I had no idea until he was almost walking under me. I'm gonna leave my gear just here at the tree and uh, just go scope it out, see what the blood looks like, so I can find my arrow and uh, hopefully follow the blood right to him. Like I said, I, just the way he acted, the way he stopped, the way he stumbled, I think he's gonna be dead right over the hill. I'm tentative to uh, celebrate because I had what I thought was a chip shot like three years ago on a buck and hit him here, just right of the vitals and uh, went into his shoulder and thought I thought I had smoked him and uh, long story short never found him um, but uh, so anyways we'll, we'll, we'll save the real excitement hopefully for when I recover him I think I see an upside down buck. Ow! Yes! I feel like all the work I put in last year paid off. Hunting for those seven days, trying out a bunch of different tree stand locations, made my choice to sit the oak flat today an easy one. Look at that buck. Huh? I've shot elk, white-tailed does, and a turkey with a bow. 
but this is my first whitetail buck. It was like it was scripted. November 2nd, 40 degrees, a cool wind, and at 2 p.m., a mature buck walks right under my stand. Sucker's heavy. And what would have been a 90 minute deer drag turns into a three hour marathon because I have to set up all these shots so that you can see how badass I am. So I'm getting ready to uh, quarter him up. What I'm interested in and I want to show you is that is uh, the uh what the arrow did so it uh came in here i think he was pretty broadside he might have been slightly quartering two based on the exit or my arrow deflected because the exit is right there so i'm just going to peel him out and then do a little necropsy And you can see, I just clipped the scapula there. It went through there, through a rib, through the vitals, and then out the other side, missing the ribs and the shoulder on the other side. Pretty sweet penetration. That sucker, come on! I'm gonna call him the micro 10. He's a big eight. But he's got little bitty G4s making him a 10. I'm gonna keep chopping them up, get them packed in the cooler, and head home. I feel lucky to have this opportunity, to be able-bodied and healthy, to have the time and the means to travel, and friends who are landowners who let me hunt their property. Killing a buck on day one was awesome, but that means I missed out on six days of hunting. Next year, I'll probably pass on this caliber of buck. You can call it trophy hunting. I call it spending more time in the woods. And to me, the time spent in the woods is as important as killing a buck.